Welcome into Road to the Draft. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. As you know, we do one of these every single week leading up to the draft. And we've, in recent weeks, done a few detours on exactly. this road to the draft. That we've done some things of maybe it's not super likely or what are just some fun alternatives that are out there. But now that we are just a few weeks out, yeah. it feels like the mock drafts start to coalesce they a little do indeed. bit. Everybody starts to merge onto a similar road. So tell me, <laughs> position-wise, what do you feel like you see the Bucks? kind of uh, these mock drafts saying that the Bucks are most likely considering? First of all, I think the road puns are supposed to be my Oh, I stole it. Bailiwick, yep. I'm so sorry. But you did a very nice job Thank with you. that. Thank you. I've been learning from you all these years. <laughs> yeah, like last, year, like we, last week we zagged saying, what if the Bucks don't do anything that everybody expects? But we're close, so let's get serious, right? And I think there's a reason why even though the Bucks are picking 26th and every pick before them compounds the variables, so it gets harder and harder to predict, and yet... Everybody's kind of predicting the same thing, and I don't think they're wrong. I, I chart mock drafts throughout the offseason from reputable sources, and of the I counted of the last 100 mock drafts I've charted, 94 have given them either have given the Bucks either a cornerback, a edge rusher, or an offensive lineman, and almost always an interior offensive line, lineman. So let's look at those spots. Starting with cornerback, a guy that I've seen hit the Bucks in the draft, and I think they they would like uh, quite a bit is Kool Aid McKinstry. From Alabama, there's a I couple. I would like him just for the name. Yeah, that's. They, I mean, this is what I would draft on, which is why I don't have Jason Light's job. But I mean, how fun is it going to be to hear Gene Deckerhoff <laughs> yell out Kool Aid? Kool Aid. That's going to be great. Um, yeah, or you could go with his real name, which is Jaquincy. Also, the guy is just loaded with loaded great with names. Loaded with cool names. And, and even McKinstry sounds kind of cool to me. But beyond the name, this is a guy. I think he's got good size, 6'0", 200. He's got length. That's the kind of thing that um, Todd Bowles likes. He's very good at communicating uh, within the defense, which is important to Coach Bowles and the coaching staff. Um, Rondé Barber ranked his top five corners and put him fifth in this draft. And picking 26th and getting the fifth corner in a good cornerback class seems about right. Um, I've seen uh, pro comps to A.J. Terrell of Atlanta, and he's obviously very good. Um, so that would be great if it worked out that way. He's a, he's a really good cover corner, and so that gives you an opportunity to do a lot of different things, mix things up a little bit. And he's just, he's just like he's, he's intelligent and he's poised, and you just he, he's a good football player. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, I, you know, I know that the Bucks love Zion McCollum, and they still have J Jamel Dean, but say it for me. Oh, you can never have enough corners. You can never have enough never, ever, cornerback depth. Never, ever, ever. Scott, this will be on Scott's tombstone <laughs> if, someday. If you draft a cornerback, he will play at some point as a rookie. Yeah. It's, it's going to happen. That's so, so true. You can't, you, there's, I, would, I will never be upset if the Buccaneers use a first-round pick on a corner. Yep. And then the other one we've talked a lot about is Edge. Edge. The, and even with the signing of Randy Gregory, you still yes. feel like this 100%. is a highly likely position yes. for them to take. I think it's the kind of thing where they won't necessarily feel compelled to make a dramatic trade up to get a guy, but if he falls, a guy they like falls to them at 26 or close, they can make a small trade. Um, I think they wouldn't hesitate to pull the trigger. And the guy I want to, we've talked about him before, but I want to highlight again is UCLA's Leatu Latu, um, who Unfortunately, I feel like his stock is starting to rise as we get closer. It looked like the Bucks would have a real good shot at him. Now I'm not so sure, but if they do, and if they do, it's probably because he has an injury history. He had a, he had a neck injury that forced him some years back to actually medically retire from football, but then he was cleared and he came back and he hasn't had any problems for two years. He's been basically the best pass rusher in the nation for the last two years, and there's some good ones out there. There's Dallas Turner and Jared Verse and Chop Robinson, and the Bucks would probably be lucky to get any of those guys. I like Latu a lot because he has the production. He's done it. He basically has led the league in pass rush win rate the last two years. Um, he's had, I think, what is it, something like 25 sacks in the last two years. So um, he was the best pass rusher in the nation last year. Wow. And I love the I love the production. Yeah. And then finally, uh, the other main position that everybody seems to be mocking us is an offensive lineman. Yeah. Specifically within that, do you feel like versus you know outside versus inside yeah. center guard? What what are you feeling like it's it's trending towards? Yeah. You got a little flexibility because um, Jason Light said at the owners meeting last month that. Even though Luke Gedeke really seemed to find his home at right tackle, that doesn't totally rule out the possibility that you could move him back to guard at some point. So you could take a tackle, but I think it's much more likely that you stick with Luke at right tackle because he played well there and you you bring in an interior offense lineman. And then you have a little flexibility between, between center and guard because Robert Hainsey 
can kind of play any position on the interior line. So, uh, and you're missing a starter because the two guys who started at left guard last year are um, Aaron Stinney, who signed with the Giants, and Matt Filer, who's unsigned. So you definitely are going to have one new starter. And uh, Jason Light has obviously done a really good job at drafting offensive linemen on the first two days in the last six years or so. It's pretty much hit every time. Um, and so I feel confident that if they like a guy at 26, like, uh, you know, in this case, we'll look at Jackson Powers. <laughs> Jackson Powers Johnson. He's got three names. Yeah. So you got to get him in the right order. It also sounds to me very much. I'm going to nerd out on his name for a minute here. It sounds very much like a DC superhero name. You got the alliteration, and sure. it just also sounds like I right. mean Jackson Powers. Johnson. I think everybody would end up just calling him JPJ though. Mm. So. I would just I just call him Powers. That's I mean that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, he is powerful. Yep. Did you see this little clip here? This. Uh, uh, with him, he's doing a drill at the combine with um, that, that's a coach for a team, and Just I don't think he intends to throw him to the ground. Which is great that he's so strong that he can accidentally throw someone yeah, to the ground. Yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. that's a great sign. And he's this a, poor coach. <laughs> I feel bad for Jeez. him. And again, I bet he was sorry afterwards. And um, and then we've looked at this clip before. Uh, you know, it's hard to tell necessarily who won that, but the fact that the offensive line coach is flipping out. Happy. Always. I mean, that's a, always me. what I look for. Is who, I watch the the offensive line and the defensive line coaches, and that very much helps me know who, how good or bad this was on yeah. either side, and that looked pretty good. Well, this guy uh, Jackson Powers Johnson won the Rim Remington Trophy last year as the nation's top center. Um, he uh, he's played guard before. Uh, he was a top five center prospect coming out of high school, and, and he's obviously paid off. He's just really powerful. He'd be a road grader right off the bat in terms of trying to get this running game on track. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think the Buccaneers could go in that direction if a guy like Jackson Powers Johnson makes it to 26. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us on this edition of Road to the Draft. Thanks again so much for being here. We've got a couple more of these before the draft, so we'll see you next time.